Hello guys, this is The Gaming Revolution here and welcome back to an all new Call of Duty Vanguard video. Today we have a lot of new exciting information about Vanguard, specifically regarding the Warzone integration. So as you guys know, just over a week ago now, according to VGC sources, there will be a new Pacific Theatre World War II themed map coming to Warzone with the release of Vanguard in November. So the integration will not be happening later on like it did with Black Ops Cold War and it's going to be happening to coincide with the launch of Vanguard. And we don't know exactly what this map is going to be like, however, they did say that it's apparently a lot bigger than Verdansk, which means that they might increase the player size to maybe even 250 players. If it is going to be a lot larger, we will just have to wait and see. And according to the Chinese leaker Victor over on Twitter, he's claiming that there is going to be some sort of destructible environments coming to Warzone as well so you're going to be able to destroy doors and it's going to be more akin to Rainbow Six Siege where you'll be able to shoot holes and openings in walls and you'll be able to destroy small buildings but it's not going to be on as large of a scale as Battlefield where you'll be able to completely decimate entire skyscrapers. Well we have some new leaked information regarding this Pacific Theatre Warzone map that's coming on the horizon thanks to Declassified over on Twitter. So apparently these points of interest have been data mined from the files of the game. Obviously, like with all leaks, we need to take this with a grain of salt. Even if these are in the files of the game, things can be misinterpreted or can simply be subject to change. And some of these locations might be slightly changed by the time the map finally releases. And I do want to say before I get into the points of interest, why on earth are these even in the files now? This is something I say literally every time something is data mined. I don't understand why these points of interest need to be in the files months and months before the game even releases and before the new map comes. You just give in the data miners stuff to work with. Anyways, the points of interest apparently include resort, capital, radio station, sub pen, farms, airfield, lagoon, beachhead, caldera, mines, village, airstrip, docks and arsenal. So yeah, there's some pretty familiar locations there, very similar ones to what we've seen on Verdansk, such as farms and airfields, as well as mines, village and dogs, but to be honest, they're pretty generic locations that most Battle Royales have, so I'm not too surprised that there are some familiar locations. And as Call of Duty Hope has pointed out on Twitter, a sub-pen, aka a submarine pen, is a type of submarine base that acts as a bunker to protect submarines from air attacks. The term is generally applied to submarine bases constructed during World War II. So yeah, are you looking forward to this specific theater, World War II was a map? Personally, I am, because you know, we're going to be able to probably fight in fighter jets and have dogfights. And I really think the atmosphere of World War II is going to work really well in Warzone, especially with the graphical fidelity of Modern Warfare's engine. And the gunplay is going to be phenomenal. Of course, they're probably going to update the ground loot to only be World War II weapons. I don't know exactly how that's going to work, how people will enjoy that. And I also do not know what's going to happen to Verdansk. Is Verdansk still going to be playable or is it just going to disappear for a while until the next Modern Warfare game in 2022 where they will introduce the nuked version of the dance. We will just have to wait and see, I guess. There is no confirmation, no information on what is happening just yet. But yeah, those are all of the points of interest for this new Warzone map. And according to the files, it seems to suggest that, that this new World War II map is going to be set on an island. Of course, this isn't confirmed, but that's just what data miners are saying over on Twitter. And the next thing I want to point out is we will be seeing the Vanguard reveal within season four, probably within the latter end of season four, so in August. We don't know exactly when, but according to the files of the game from Zesty Card Leaks, there is a new major event coming called X2 that will feature the armored train and ambushes. So yeah, this really reminds me of Train Goes Boom from the original Call of Duty World War II from Sledgehammer Games. And yeah, this event could be pretty awesome if it is going to be featuring armored trains and ambushes. I'm really excited to see what ends up happening within this reveal. Of course, we will then see the trailer at the end of the reveal for Vanguard. So I will leave a link to my previous video where I discussed the full VGC sources article from their sources over at Activision that gave them a bunch of exclusive insider information on Vanguard. But I'm looking forward to the campaign since it is going to be based around the Pacific Theatre. And if that game is going to have some sort of destructible environment system similar to Rainbow Six Siege, which the Warzone integration 
Edition is apparently going to have, I think it's really going to change up the gameplay. Maybe we could see some sort of similar mode to War that was within the original Call of Duty World War 2. And I am actually pretty hopeful for this game. It seems like there is as little excitement as there possibly can be for Vanguard. I have literally seen the hype before every single Call of Duty reveal since I've been making YouTube videos for a while now. And literally every single year, there has been more hype for the next Call of Duty than this year. I think it really is at an all-time low right now. Even before the Infinite Warfare reveal, I remember the hype was a lot higher than this. People just seem to not be hyped at all. I guess it doesn't really matter though because Call of Duty Warzone is doing really well. It's really successful and even if the game does flop or doesn't do as well, I'm sure the Warzone integration with the new World War 2 map will do very well. And according to VGC sources, Sledgehammer Games have had a lot more time to work on this new Warzone map and work with Raven Software on the integration so that the operators and the weapons carry over so there's not going to be any weird balancing issues when the Vanguard weapons come over to Warzone. Anyways, we have some further leaks from the Modern Warfare 2 Ghost who has apparently seen some leaked gameplay of Call of Duty Vanguard. And obviously he's been very accurate with his leaks in the past and this is what he had to say. It was definitely World War 2 uniform soldiers. He saw a Car 98. They were using Modern Warfare 2019's asset for it. Some World War 2 trench shotgun, Molotovs and the map they were playing on looked as if it was set in an African palace. The hood apparently looks similar to World at Wars. So yeah, we don't really learn too much there. I guess he's just confirmed a few different weapons, that being obviously the Car 98 and the trench gun, although they were using the same model as the Car 98 from Modern Warfare. I wonder if they're going to change the model or whether they're just going to keep it the same. And he then said, saving the best for last. An integration of headquarters might be coming back for Call of Duty Vanguard. So yeah, a lot of people have been speculating about this anyways, but the headquarters was definitely the best feature of Call of Duty World War 2. It just sucks that when World War 2 released, the headquarters was completely broken, the game was completely broken, and they had to, you know, make it so that the headquarters could only load in a couple people until months after the game released because it was just causing people's games to crash. So hopefully if they do do another headquarters, it's a lot better this time. And yeah, I guess it'll just be a social arena where you can look at each other's loose. There'll probably be a firing range and there'll be different things you can do just like the original headquarters. And maybe it's going to be expanded upon from the original. I wonder if we're going to see a zombies headquarters as well because that was something a lot of people were asking for in Call of Duty World War 2 and we never saw it. We do know this game is apparently going to be having a zombies mode and apparently Treyarch are helping out in some way because it is in the same storyline as the Dark Ether storyline. As you guys know, within the next Mawada Totem Berlin Zombies map, Nazi zombies are escaping from the Dark Ether. So the storyline of the Dark Ether storyline is very much integrated into World War II. Drake even said when they tweeted out the Mawada Totem teaser, an old enemy awaits in the Dark Ether, which I'm assuming is probably referring to these Nazis that are about to escape and or the accursed one, the first one. But yeah, considering we are going to be seeing this Pacific Theater World War II Warzone map when Vanguard releases, it pretty much puts the nail in the coffin for us ever seeing the Euro Mountains map into Warzone. And that is unfortunate. It just seems like that is the case though. But that's pretty much all of the information I have for you guys today. I am looking forward for Vanguard, despite most of the community not looking forward to it. I think Zombies could be pretty good if it is going to be set in the Dark Aether storyline. Although I wasn't that big of a fan of World War II Zombies, I think the Final Reich was a good start and I really liked the Shadow Throne. I wasn't that big of a fan of the other maps though. But if Treyarch are overseeing, and helping out, I think it has a lot more chance for success. And I think this new Warzone map is going to be a lot of fun, especially with semi-destructible environments. Anyways, thank you for watching the video and make sure to subscribe if you're not the latest and greatest Call of Duty news and information. So anyways, thank you for watching and uh, bye.